You were expecting the mostly facts guy? Sorry, it's still me. And I brought all my friends. Chat GPT, Stable Diffusion, Vicuna, everybody. So let's get started. Hope I didn't scare you too much. What's the fastest you've seen a crowd go from excited to horrified? Story 1. The entire assembled students from the elementary school where teacher-slash-astronaut Krista McAuliffe taught at, who were broadcast live to the world as they watched the space shuttle challenge explode seconds after takeoff, unaliving all hands on board, including their teacher. Oh yeah, we had an all-school assembly to watch it. On a tiny TV up on the auditorium stage, of course. I was in third grade. We barely understood what was going on. The most unnerving thing was watching our teachers weeping quietly and trying to look strong for us. I was also in third grade, but on the West Coast, so I woke up to my mom crying in front of the TV. The science teacher took us out to watch it from the playground. We were only 50 miles away and could see it clearly. Then the entire thing blew up. I remember being in school when watching that happen live. That was a big shock. That was all anyone saw on the news forever. Aside from the lives lost, it was just such a tragedy to see something that was going to be a big triumph just completely fail so quickly. Story 2. The climax of the last Twilight movie is a fight scene that goes on for 10 minutes. Vampires are ripping each other's heads off, giant wolves are throwing them around like chew toys, and one by one, each of Bella's friends and family perish around her. You can actually hear people in the audience react as each named character perishes. And none of this happened in the book, which was criticized for its lack of climax. As each minute goes on, it feels like they improved the film's story to give it a real sense of danger and excitement and payoff to the series. So it's intense. And right as they finish the big bad evil guy, the camera fades to black, pulls out, and reveals that it all was a vision. The last ten minutes didn't happen. It was someone seeing a future that might happen. No one expired. Just a bunch of vampires and wolves standing around staring at each other in silence. Then they all walk away, alive and well. The crowd groans. A girl up front shouts, Are you kidding me? Everyone sits back in their seat. No one cares about what's happening on screen anymore. Some people are laughing because someone hit the undo button on the most exciting ten minutes of the movie. Never have I seen a theater turn on a film so quickly and so hard. I was at one of the midnight premieres for this one and saw the same thing. Several different people yelled, What the hell? when it showed it was all just a vision and you could feel the disappointment in the crowd. Bit of a long shot here, but any chance 2020 is just one of these visions? If it was, I'm not sure if I'd be celebrating or ticked off. Gotta be a vision. Just need to work out who the person having it is. Edit. After careful deliberation, I've concluded that we are taking part in a real-life, real-time series of Black Mirror, just as the conspiracy theorists suggest but the writers can't figure out how to tie up all the plot holes and keep writing stuff to explain the other stuff, which has caused a backfiring reality loop. Either that or somebody's been doing all the substances. I've been watching Black Mirror when it was a BBC series originally. A lot of things on that show just hit really close to home. Actually, I hear they're working up a new series of it, and I can't wait for that. Apparently, the writers took a break because reality was just far too crazy for them to even try and compete with. Story 3. There was a guy performing risky stunt dives in a river for money. He pulled off great stuff and people were clapping and clearly hyped. One of the tricks went really bad and he crashed head first into a rock from a decent height and unalived himself. I always remember what Penn Gillette said at the end of his nail gun routine. It was like, we find it morally wrong to put someone in real danger for entertainment. And I have to agree. They think it's immoral to make the audience complicit in danger. Basically, you're paying to see a magic show, not a medical emergency. So there shouldn't realistically be that possibility on the docket. Yes, and they managed to make it look dangerous in many of their acts. No need for real danger. I've seen Penn and Teller live a few times. I've always been fascinated ever since they came upon the scene. 
Not only did they get really crazy with revealing a lot of the old tricks to us, they really leaned into the gore. They do stuff that looks dangerous, but I agree. I don't think it's right to really put someone in danger just for the sake of entertainment. Story 4. A friend of mine decided it would be fun to try and see if he could smash a beer glass on his head. Up until then, he was just being an enthusiastic drunk and had some positive attention. He then decided the beer glass thing was a good idea and promptly executed it. Head wounds bleed a lot in the first minute. Crowd went from, aw, you're cute, to hell, he's gonna die. I sobered up in an instant and got a semi-clean towel for him to stop the bleeding. Thankfully, head wounds also stop bleeding pretty quick in most instances. Drunk ideas are almost never good ideas, especially the morning after when you wake up next to a bad idea. Story 5. WWE's Over the Edge, 1999. Owen Hart fell 70 feet to his perishing during the event and the company inexplicably continued on with the show after he'd been taken to a hospital. That's kind of messed up. Oh, he forgot to mention that during the countdown to return to the televised show, someone just nonchalantly tells Jim Ross, that didn't know that Owen had perished, that he now had to announce the unaliving of Owen Hart to the viewers. Yeah, he was told he had the duty of letting everyone know. Literally, I think it was 10 seconds after he was told about it himself? JR is a true professional. Rest in peace, Owen Hart. One of the greats. Story 6. I saw this on YouTube somewhere. A bodybuilder was strutting his stuff in front of a crowd, warming them up and everything at an event. They absolutely loved it. Many people had attended just to see him. He was at his peak. Huge muscles and sculpted physique, absolutely amazing. I don't personally like the bodybuilding look, but you gotta respect hard work. The crowd was cheering him on, and he got so pumped up, so full of energy and emotion, that instead of just walking onto the stage, he did an impromptu jump flip. He launched himself high into the air and did this impressive flip. The crowd went berserk, but he was a bodybuilder, not a gymnast. He landed on his neck and expired instantly, crumpling on the spot. It's one of the most horrific, sudden, and unexpected things I've ever seen. Maybe the worst part was not all of the crowd realized immediately. They kept smiling and cheering for their hero for another minute before it sank in that they had just witnessed him perish right in front of them, and they were clapping for an unalive man. Edit. His name was Sefiso Langello Thabete only 23 years old, from South Africa. He was a junior world champion in his weight category. For those who are asking, a few people in the comments have posted the link, and it's here. I very much do not recommend watching. It's tragic and horrible. Obviously unsafe for unaliving. Holy hell, that's horrific. God, I'm sorry for laughing. This comment is the internet in a nutshell. It's awful, he whispered. It's tragic, he sighed. It's totally dreadful the way that he perished. He stared with distress and a shake of his head. However, I do want to see it, he said. Yeah, that pretty much sums up a lot of the internet. This is amazingly tragic. I don't recommend looking up this video and watching it. It's a very painful reminder that life can be fragile and can end instantly. This man had everything ahead of him in life. It's scary to see all that just go away with a snap of your fingers. Story 7. Seven to eight years ago, during a concert, there was an earthquake. Not too huge, but enough for some speakers to fall and to scare the hell out of those attending. At a music festival, Blues Fest, in my city, Ottawa, we had a stage collapse in a windstorm a few years back. Edit. It was actually nine years ago. The band playing at the time was Cheap Trick and they sued the festival and the stage company. Edited. Some details. Story 8. An American comedian in the Republic of Ireland saying how happy he was to be in the United Kingdom. Similarly, a Canadian band hollering, We love England! at the beginning of their set in Glasgow. Yikes. Story 9. Monday Night Football. November 18, 1985. Washington Redskins versus the New York Giants. 
I was pretty young at the time, so being allowed to stay up late on a weekday was a rare occasion. During one of the plays, Joe Theismann was sacked by Lawrence Taylor and Harry Carson of the Giants. The entire stadium went silent as Theismann would end up suffering a compound fracture of the tibia and fibula. What I remember most vividly is that the broadcast kept replaying it over and over again and seeing the shin snap at a 90-degree angle. It made me physically nauseous and I had to walk out of the room. If I recall correctly, following the injury, broadcasting policies were changed so that constant replays like this would not be shown in the future. Edit. Surprised to see how memorable this was for others as well. As a budding Redskins fan at the time, I gained a huge amount of respect for Lawrence Taylor that day. I understand that injuries are a part of all sports. It's a level of risk that many are willing to take. It was the need to keep replaying it over and over for every imaginable angle that made the impression. Thank you all for sharing your similar experiences. Seeing Alex Smith's leg injury live was just as bad. I literally screamed in horror when that happened. Proof we live in the Matrix. Joe Theismann broke his right tibia and fibula on November 18, 1985 in a game in Washington that ended 23-21. The only three-time defensive player of the year, Lawrence Taylor, was involved in the injury, which occurred around the 40-yard line. Theismann's Pro Bowl left tackle, Joe Jacoby, wasn't on the field due to injury. Alex Smith broke his right tibia and fibula on November 18, 2018, in a game in Washington that ended 23-21. The only other three-time defensive player of the year, J.J. Watt, was involved in the injury, which occurred around the 40-yard line. Smith's Pro Bowl left tackle, Trent Williams, wasn't on the field due to injury. I'm not fact-checking any of this because I love eerie coincidences and want it to be true. Excellent, clear writing, by the way. I don't know if that's the injury, but I remember seeing one on a football game where they kept replaying it over and over. That was so shocking and cringe-inducing. The other one I remember they kept playing over and over was actually from the gorgeous ladies of wrestling. One of the wrestlers was supposed to do this certain kind of flip, and their elbow just went the wrong way. Ugh. They were a small TV show, but they played that up. I mean, it's ratings, so it had to work for them. Story 10. I was at some weird zoo-slash-animal preserve north of Phoenix in 2012, and there was a tigress in a chain-length compound. This little girl went up to her and blew her a kiss. The tigress looked at her and licked her, her own, not the little girl's whiskers. And the crowd went, aww. Then the tigress shifted a little bit and peed all over the little girl. The crowd was shocked and horrified, but I laughed my butt off. While I was reading this, I was so scared it was going to say she was mauled by the tiger. I had the opposite happen at my local zoo last summer. It's a small zoo, and they really are more about education and conservation than anything else. The animals have large enclosures and lots of places to hide, so sometimes you just can't see them. The female tiger was sunning herself on some rocks, but the male tiger was right at the fence, pacing back and forth and seemed to be snarling. A group gathered. It really is a small zoo, so maybe 15 to 20 people, and we were all expressing concern for the tiger. Eventually, a zookeeper noticed the group and came over. She actually laughed when she realized what we were concerned about. Apparently, the tiger just does that sometimes. It was trying to impress the crowd and seem like a bad boy. In reality, the female was the boss. So the male was trying to appear tough while the female was busy. The zookeeper jumped the little barrier to prevent people getting close to the fence. She put her hand to the fence and baby talked a little and the tiger immediately turned into a little kitten, rubbing the fence, rolling onto his belly, hoping for pets, chittering happily. It was very cute. I had the opposite happen at my local zoo last summer. I was expecting a story about a little girl peeing on a tigress. Story 11. During a Buffalo Sabres game, Clint Malarchuk took an ice skate to the neck, severing his carotid artery and partially cutting his jugular vein. He almost bled out on the ice. The sight was so horrific, two fans had heart attacks and 11 others fainted. Numerous fans vomited at the sight of all the blood. Malarchuk thought he was going to perish on the ice, so his only thought was getting off the ice so his mom didn't have to watch him perish on TV. 
He asked for a priest and had the equipment manager call his mom to tell her he loved her. The only reason he didn't perish is the Sabres athletic trainer was a combat medic in Vietnam. My parents were at the game and said that most of the fans assumed the worst and that seeing the ice turn red was one of the most horrifying things they'd seen in person. I highly recommend reading his Players' Tribune article that recounts the entire experience and life afterwards. I've seen the video, and it's so horrific I don't know how he survived. I wonder how quickly they stabilized him and how. There was so much blood so quickly I just can't understand how he lived. I'm obviously not a doctor, but holy hell, that's one lucky man. Incredibly lucky guy. He later survived a gunshot to the head in a failed self-unaliving attempt. It's talked about more in the article. Another comment reply to mine posted. As far as surviving the injury, Malarchuk's life was saved due to quick action by the Sabres athletic trainer, Jim Pizzatelli, a former U.S. Army combat medic who served in the Vietnam War. He gripped Malarchuk's neck and pinched off the blood vessel, not letting go until doctors arrived to begin stabilizing the wound. He led Malarchuk off the ice, then applied extreme pressure by kneeling on his collarbone, a procedure designed to produce a low breathing rate and low metabolic state, which is preferable to exsanguination. Malarchuk was conscious and talking on the way to the hospital, and jokingly asked paramedics if they could bring him back in time for the third period. The game resumed when league personnel received word that Malarchuk was in stable condition. Malarchuk lost 1.5 liters of blood. It took doctors a total of 300 stitches to close the 6-inch wound. He was back on the ice in 10 days. Story 12 I don't know if this counts, but I'm a huge fan of 90s rock. Corn, Slipknot, Seether, Mushroom Head, etc. Anyways, I've always wanted to see Marilyn Manson in concert, and he was opening for, I think, one of the mentioned bands above a few years back. Anyways, he comes on and just looked horrible. Kind of slurring, but whatever, I get it. So like four songs in, he starts singing Beautiful People, and most everyone seemed into it. Well, maybe because it's Texas and it was an outdoor venue over 100 degrees, but he just goes, forget it, y'all suck, and walks off the stage. Took a few seconds to register with everyone, he wasn't joking, and everyone starts booing and cussing. I was legit excited, and it just turned to garbage so quick. Edit. Thanks for the guild. Funny enough, I had a similar experience with Manson at a festival. He slurred his way through about two songs while falling all over the stage, before he just wandered off and never came back. As it was a festival, we had another act to go, so people weren't too upset, but it was very strange. Surely there are legal repercussions for doing this sort of stuff. It's Manson. You're lucky if you get a full set out of him at all. I saw Manson live during one of those big, uh, gatherings of rock festivals. He actually did perform a full set. He wasn't slurring or anything. There were some of my friends who just actually walked out and took a break while the whole set was going on, because the big headliner was Ozzy Osbourne and Black Sabbath. That's who he was there to see. Watching Pantera before that didn't hurt either. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. Story 13. We were all 17 or 18 on a school trip. Typical week away doing rock climbing, archery, camping, etc. At the end of the trip, we're gathered in a big hall for one final gathering, and then out of the blue, there was a demonstration on how to effectively unalive a chicken. Using a live chicken that was unalived in front of us for some reason. No warning. So it was a fun week at the KFC training camp, which ended in a game of chicken. Your school took you rock climbing and camping for a week? Where are you from? Somewhere wealthier than I'm from, that's for sure. Story 14. Several years back, and my band opens up for a hardcore punk outfit from Illinois at an all-ages venue where they have a sci-fi theme to their show. The singer dresses up as a mad scientist, and the other three members dress up as his evil robots. They also have old television sets plugged in around the stage playing 1950s B-horror movies while they play. No one including the people running the venue, have ever seen these guys play before, but going off of the theme, we were expecting something awesome. That is, 
until I'm backstage putting my equipment away and noticing them all pounding back shots of tequila. When it's their turn to play, they're so hammered they can't even make it through one verse of a song. The singer ended up drop-kicking one of the TVs into the crowd of about 200 people, which caught fire. This caused the sound guy to end their set right there, and they were banned from the venue for life. I've never seen a crowd go from happy to oh hell so fast. One of my buddies saw the Stooges in the 1970s. The band started the show playing raw power with no vocals for about 10 straight minutes. Then Iggy finally stumbled out. He made it through about three songs before he just fell the hell over. And that was it. The show was done. That would be 73, really close to them breaking up. The podcast No Dogs in Space did a fantastic series on the Stooges. Story 15. Diablo Immortal Announcement. I mean... Don't you guys own phones? Same happened in the Mythic Hall. As soon as Chang opened and used the words mobile, the whole crowd let out an audible groan. I still can't understand how a company like Blizzard messed up so majorly. Those people definitely got sacked after this. Edit. By mess up, I meant how Blizzard unveiled and presented the game at BlizzCon. Not that the game itself was a failure. They should know their audience much better after all these years of catering to hardcore players. Oh, that was such a disappointment. The game wasn't even supposed to be developed in-house by Blizzard. It was some Asian action game that they sort of reskinned. Played around with it. It's fun. It has its moments. But no way I'm spending dime one on anything that they are going to be shoving in my face as cosmetic equipment. Story 16 at a friend's wedding, the groom kicked the flower boy. He was no more than ten, so yeah. On purpose? Yeah, it was terrible. I didn't exactly see it happen, though. Just heard a collective gasp from the crowd and the boy on the ground. There was a moment of silence, and all hell broke loose. Didn't even get to finish me damn plate. That's so sad. What were they serving? Story 17. Last week, at a BLM protest, they were letting anyone come up and speak through a megaphone. This man got up and started talking about his newborn son and how he wanted to make sure we have a better world for him. Then he starts talking about love and unity, and the guy essentially had the crowd eating out of the palm of his hand. Then he brought up Bill Cosby and how he was arrested on allegations, and the crowd turned instantly. I remember watching a Twitter video Snoop Dogg posted where he defended Bill Cosby's innocence and talked it up as some type of racist conspiracy. I've sort of soured on the guy since then. Didn't help that he also referred to Gail King as a doghead shrew in the same video. Story 18. I, along with an entire beachfront of about 80 plus people, watched a boat back up and chomp a lady into pieces. It was bad. What the hell? It's not terribly infrequent. A woman near me lost both arms to a boating accident when she jumped off the back while the driver was still reversing. I do not swim near running boats ever for this reason. My brother's first girlfriend was decapitated this way. Her father was driving the boat. Story 19. This is the most recent example that comes to mind. Oh God, I hadn't seen this. The immediate silence made me cringe my entire body into a singularity. I wanted to throw my phone away in an act of mental self-defense. Okay, I was kind of afraid to watch this video. It's actually really funny. For anyone who doesn't want to see or can't hear, basically the guy screams about how everyone needs to practice love and how every individual religion is equal. People are cheering. Then suddenly he shouts... The N-word, hard R, come in every color, and the audience just quiets down. He shouts it again to make sure they heard it. You hear some chick just go, what? Record scratch. Story 20. Detroit Tigers' almost perfect game. We all saw the play and the dude was out. We all start celebrating. Then we slowly realize the ump called him safe. Celebration quickly turned to the opposite. Technically not horrified, but still the fastest 180 I've seen or been a part of. Detroit sports and officials turning a moment of elation into a moment of sadness in an instant. Name a more iconic duo. 
Story 21. I was at a 4th of July fireworks show in Fort Walton, Destin, Florida. The show was being staged from the inlet from the Gulf of Mexico to the bay. People were watching it from the other side of the inlet, the Highway 98 bridge and from their boats on the water. The first salvo launched, but one of the shells exploded either in the launch tube or just above and ignited the rest of the show on the ground. Some launched a little bit before exploding. What was supposed to be a 30 to 40 minute show lasted one to two minutes. As the first shells blew up, I could see the silhouette of the technicians as they ran, like a stop motion movie. The technicians were cool as hell since none of them were looking back at the explosions. I never realized how big the bursts were until I saw them going off on the ground. Everybody was trying to get away. We were being hit by pieces of fireworks. They weren't just landing on everybody, they were hitting us. My dad started the boat but realized we couldn't move. A lot of kids were watching the show while they floated in the water. We were yelling at the other boats to stop because of the kids in the water. Fortunately, enough people heard, listened, or realized what the problem now was that they stopped and locked everybody in place. Nobody was seriously hurt or unalived. Only a few techs were treated for minor burns. On that day, those techs outran Usain Bolt on the beach, wearing safety gear. Story 22. The technicians were cool as hell. I just read this. Oh, this is a reaction to that. The technicians were cool as hell since none of them were looking back at the explosions. I just about lost it here. You have a way with making a disaster story funny. I am a fireworks technician. If you see me running, try to keep up. Story 23. I wasn't present, but the Sugarland stage collapse must have been up there. Sudden event accidents and attacks seem like a nightmare. Just a few to think of. The station fire at a Great White concert. 100 unalive. Labatta Clan attack at an Eagles of Death Metal concert. 90 unalive. Vegas shooting during Jason Aldean concert. 58 unalive. Columbus nightclub shooting at a Damage Plan concert. 5 unalive, including Dimebag Daryl. 1955 Le Mans disaster, 84 unalive, Ramstein Air Show, 70 unalive, really makes you realize how fragile life is. One second you're having fun, and before you can even process what's going on, you're perished. The Manchester Arena bombing during the Ariana Grande concert comes to mind as well, especially since the audience was so many young people. Imagine how many 12-year-olds saw others their age expire. Imagine having to tell your kids what happened. Every time I think about it, I get upset. Story 24. Our Bud Dwyer's press conference that turned into a film self-unaliving. We had a local TV anchor in Florida named Christine Chubbuck say, in keeping with Channel 40's policy of bringing you the latest in blood and guts and in living color, you're going to see another first. An attempted self-unaliving and shoots herself in the head. Circa 1974. The footage never got out, so it's not well known. I saw the movie about her. Did viewers literally witness it live? Yep, but very few people had VCRs then, so it wasn't recorded outside of the studio. Story 25. There was a Darren Brown show called Remote Control. It was all about the effects of mob mentality. The crowd had to decide whether something nice happened or something bad happened to the same person. Each time, the thing would be better or worse than the last. Eventually, it led to them deciding that he would be kidnapped. They were all watching live on hidden cameras in a studio, by the way. When the kidnapping was attempted, it showed him evading them by running into the road and getting hit by a car. The whole crowd gasped, and eventually people asked the filming to stop. The last part was just an actor-slash-stuntman, though. Just to add, everyone in the crowd wore masks, and the idea is that when people are anonymous and concealed... They tend to make some morally questionable decisions or follow the rest of the anonymous audience members in an example of mob mentality. The show itself freaking sucked, though. They gave compensation to the poor bloke they were torturing after all that. Give a man a mask and he will show you his true face. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.